We're going to talk more about activity in this video, and so far, all we know about activity is that it's similar to concentration, but it takes into account the presence of spectators, which you now know as the ionic strength. So in this video, we're going to get a little bit more quantitative with activity and actually use it in calculations. Activity is defined as gamma, the activity coefficient of an ion, times its concentration. So the brackets, as always, refer to the concentration of an ion, and gamma is the activity coefficient. These can be found usually in a table, and activity coefficients will always be provided for you in problems. Let's take a look at a table where we can find activity coefficients. And here's the table from your Harris text. You can see that the table is organized according to the charge of an ion. Here we have all of the plus or minus ones. Here we have all of the plus or minus two ions and so on. It's also organized according to ionic strength, as you can see here. And then it's also organized according to the sizes of ions. So those three things, ionic strength, charge, and size of the ion must have an effect on the magnitude of the activity coefficient. So again, if activity is equal to the activity coefficient times concentrations, we can see that as the activity coefficient approaches 1, the activity approaches concentrations. And under these conditions, it would be okay to ignore activity. So what would those conditions be? And again, we're going to be looking at ionic strength, charge, and size. So if we look at this table, we can see that as the ionic strength decreases, the activity coefficient increases. Again, as the ionic strength decreases, the activity coefficient increases. So it would be okay to ignore activity at low ionic strength. So think of fresh water versus salt water. It would be okay to ignore activity in fresh water, but not in salt water. At high ionic strength, these activity coefficients are small and far away from one. Let's take a look at the charge of an ion. So maybe we could look at an ion that's 800 picometers across, and here we see an activity coefficient of 0.966 for a plus or minus one. Well, for a plus or minus two, an ion of the same size has a much smaller activity coefficient. So we would not want to ignore activity coefficients for highly charged ions, but it would be okay to ignore them for ions with a low charge. And then what about the effect of the size of an ion? Well, as we go down, we can see that ions are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and so are their activity coefficients. So the only time that we would ignore activity is for these large ions. So with this very brief background of activity, can we use it to solve a problem? So here's a problem. Notice we're asked to use activities. Can we find the silver ion concentration in a solution of 0 0.010 formal KBr saturated with silver bromide and we're given the KSP of silver bromide? So the first thing I want to do is visualize this. And when I see this sat the, the solution is saturated with silver bromide, 
I'm imagining silver bromide, but the solution contains potassium ions and bromide ions. Uh-oh, I think this might be a common ion effect. But can we, can we find the silver ion concentration in this solution? So I'm going to write my reaction. Silver bromide dissociates ever so slightly into silver and bromide. And can I write down what I have at equilibrium? Well, clearly I have a solid. I'm looking for silver. And what would the bromide ion concentration be in this solution? Well, it would be this, wouldn't it? 0 0.010 molar bromide. So KSP now would be the activity of the silver ion times the activity of the bromide ion. And I would write, rewrite the activity of the silver ion as its coefficient times its concentration. And then I would do the same for the activity of bromide. The activity of bromide is the activity coefficient of bromide times its concentration. So let me rewrite this a little bit as the activity coefficient of silver times the activity coefficient of bromide. Silver, I'm going to leave alone. That's my unknown. And then the concentration of bromide, we know as 0 0.010 molar. So if I could rearrange this equation for silver, I would write KSP over those activity coefficients of silver and bromide and 0 0.010 molar. So now I can plug in the KSP. That's 5.0 times 10 to the negative 13th. And now I need to look up the activity coefficients for silver and bromide. And in order to do that, I'm going to need the ionic strength of this solution. And how would I find that ionic strength? Well, they gave us the concentration of the potassium bromide. And what do you notice about potassium bromide? It has a plus one cation and a minus one anion. So the ionic strength is 0 0.010 molar, the same as the concentration. Let's go back to that table and see if we can find these activity coefficients. So again, the ionic strength is here and I see silver, that would be 0 0.8908, and I also see bromide here at 0.899. So we can plug those into our equation. The activity coefficient of silver was 0 0.898. The activity coefficient of bromide was 0 0.899. And we'll just keep that concentration there. And for the silver ion concentration, I got 6.2 times 10 to the negative 11th molar. So that was an example of using activities in a solubility problem. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll do more like this in class. Thanks for listening.